You ready, Missy? You ready? Oh, yeah. Okie dokie, artichokies. Quick announcements. Okay. I have my, so I'm not teaching my frequency class in September. Uh, Jenny's subbing for me. I'm going to my friend's wedding in St. George that weekend. So Jenny will be subbing that class and that's um, the second weekend of September. So not, what is today? Is it this week? <laughs> <laughs> Did I already miss it? Okay, so it's this weekend. Is it? It's next weekend. It's not this weekend. It's next weekend. And then after that, on the 21st, I'm teaching my embodiment class. That's all that matters. <laughs> um, so the 21st, it's a Saturday. Um, I'm teaching embodiment at seven to nine. This is what I'm really excited about. So I have my friend and he was a um, breathwork. He was one of my breathwork students. He's going to come DJ for that class. So it will be really fun to have a live DJ in here. Um, he did it last month, actually. And it was awesome, I thought, personally. And then so that'll be seven to nine. My yoga teacher training training group will be in here. So we'll have a good group. Um, and then afterwards, nine to however long we want to, we're just going to have a dance party. So then he's going to DJ and I'll just turn out the lights, maybe put on my star lights and just dance. And um, I'll put up flyers and I'm going to say like costumes are welcome. So people can, yeah, hopefully people will come. There will be, I think at least like 20 of us here with my teacher training group. <laughs> so it'll feel fun. I hope <laughs> that's the goal. Um, and then I have a couple of new retreats that I've got. I put Costa Rica up on my website, which is not until next May. So you have some time to save up or think about it. All the spots for that one are the same price. It's $2,200. Um, and I'm just going to try to, the place is really big. So I'm going to try to put everyone in the accommodations that they want. So if you want to come as a single, you can come as a single for the same price as if you're coming with three friends and want to stay in a room with your three friends. Um, and it's just kind of first come first serve. So if your situation, once you sign up is not available, then it's like, okay, well, here's what's available. Do you still want to come or not? Um, and then one other thing, I, I'm just like, this is kind of a spontaneous one, but my yoga teacher training group, I have a retreat weekend planned for them. And I was going to try to use my sister's, my sister-in-law's cabin in Bear Lake, but I'm not going to do that anymore. And I rented this massive place up in Sundance. It's really cool. So I'm going to make it um, just, it's just Friday to Sunday, really quick weekend getaway up in Sundance. Um, that one, it starts at 777 for quad room and goes up to 1,111. <laughs> Or I decided to do magic numbers and see if it works, if it brings me the people. Um, and that's for single occupancy. It's this really beautiful cabin. It has a big, huge hot tub that's like I was telling Michael. It's kind of in like these natural rocks inside of the house and with big windows all around it. And there's plenty of, it sleeps up to 40 people and I'm going to have 25. So we won't be like overly crowded, hopefully. Um, and it's not actually going to be yoga. It's going to be more mindfulness um, and just somatic practices. So like um, sound baths, a little bit of movement, but not like you're used to. So yeah. Anyway, if you have questions, feel free to ask. Other than that, let's just do our thing. So go ahead, my friends, and find your comfortable seated meditation if you're not already there. So I always like to move a little bit. You can explore some wiggles, stretch. Maybe you just want to roll your shoulders out or roll your neck from side to side, roll your head around. So just kind of feel your physical body a little more. When you are ready, find stillness. So eventually just settle in. So as you settle, Feel into the length of your spine. Feel your breath rising and falling. 
Notice sensations that are present for you. So the sensation just of your butt on the ground, the air on your skin. Maybe you feel your clothes or your hair against your skin. So notice what you feel physically. As you sit, what feels good? And what feels maybe a little stiff or tight? So for some of us, sitting is comfortable. And for some of us, sitting is quite uncomfortable. So just notice, how does it feel for you today? And then just let it be whatever it is. And start to notice, how do you feel energetically? How do you feel even emotionally? So rather than trying to make emotions go away, see if you can actually tune into them. Notice what's there. So see if you can feel into your own body as just this great, big, vast, wide open space energy to flow through. So energy is your breath. Energy is sensation. Energy is emotion. So whatever is coming, whatever is going, see if you can just let it and just be the witness. Next time you inhale, fill up as big as you can. When you think you are full hold in that fullness and maybe even find an extra little sip. Open your mouth, great big sigh. Ah. Good, do that two more times. So inhale, fill up. Big as you can get, take up more space, even just energetically feel big, spacious, extra sip. And then out your mouth when you're ready, let it go. Ah. Good, last time. So biggest inhale you've taken all morning long. Imagine you can expand in every single direction like a 3D globe, hold in fullness. Keep holding, but see if you can relax a little bit around your held breath, take that extra sip. And then out your mouth, release. Very nice. Seal your lips now and start to drop into ujjayi breath. An invitation as you start to cultivate your ujjayi breath, to bring your hands to your knees or your, your thighs, wherever you want, and just start to circle your torso around. So inhale, come forward and exhale, kind of round and curl in as you lean back. Inhale, open your heart. Exhale, lean back, hollow out your belly. And then after a few rounds in one direction, switch it up and see what you can feel through your spine, through your side bodies, front body and back body, hips and pelvis. Yeah, good. And then eventually we'll take these onto our hands and our knees. So as you are ready, just come forward to hands and knees and keep circling around. So. Hips move back to one side, forward, almost like you're in a cobra or an up dog position, and then all the way around. So great big circles. After you've taken a few in one direction, switch it up. And you could even play with kind of figure eights with your hips, little infinity signs. If it feels good to pause in one place and just move back and forth a bit, go for it. So this is your time to get better acquainted with your body this morning. So what's been going on in your body? How did you sleep last night? How do your shoulders feel? How does your neck feel? How does your spine feel and your hips? All the way down. What can you notice in your fingers and your toes? And then slowly, let's come back to a neutral spine position. So just regular hands and knees. And from your hands and your knees, bring your knees at least hips width distance apart. Spread your fingers really wide and push into the ground. Take your right arm forward and your left leg back for a spinal balance. So find a long, strong line of energy from your fingertips all the way back to your foot. 
Face your palm in like you're going to shake somebody's hand. So palm in and thumb up. And then with your back foot, imagine you're stomping it onto an invisible wall. You guys look awesome. Take one more big inhale, strong and powerful line. As you exhale, elbow to knee underneath you, curl in and hollow out your belly all the way to empty in your breath. Inhale, re-extend like you're moving through honey. So really slow and smooth. Exhale, elbow to knee, all the way to empty. Good. Inhale, reach, lengthen, strong, powerful line. And one more time. Exhale, elbow to knee. Empty out, curl in. Inhale, re-extend, lengthen. Now as you exhale, set just your right hand down. Pivot on your right knee so your right foot comes to the outside of your yoga mat and take your left arm up. So opening to a modified side plank. If you can squeeze to your outer right glute, it's called your medial glute, and press your hips forward more, feel the front of your hips open. Stay where you're at or reach your left arm towards the front wall and work that length in your left side. Your left leg, if it's still lifted, it's strong and powerful. Your left foot is active. If you would like, final option, bend your left knee, reach back, grab hold of your foot. And once you've got it, gentle leverage to work your pose. So kick foot into hand, pull hand back into foot. See if you can kick your foot straight back rather than up. And then let your heart look up a little bit more. Nice adjustments. Awesome, Katie. Take one more deep breath. Slowly, bottom of your exhale, unwind. Come back to hands and knees, tabletop. And then from your tabletop, take your right leg straight out to the right. This is called gating your right leg. So toes face forward, sole of your foot presses into the ground. Left arm out, left arm up, breathe in here. As you exhale, thread your left arm underneath and come down to rest on the outside of your shoulder, outside of your head. Give yourself about three to five deep breaths. You can work it however you want. Maybe you press down with your right hand, right fingertips. Maybe you wrap your right arm behind your back. See if you can feel that space in between your shoulder blades, back of your heart. A little more space in between your back ribs, your low back, all the way down into your kidneys, all the way down into your pelvic bowl. If you do happen to have your right hand lifted, bring it slowly back to the ground. On an inhalation, unthread your left arm and reach it out and all the way up towards the sky. And left hand to the ground, pick up your right foot, swing your right leg off the left edge of your mat. So curl your toes under and push them down, pull your hips to the right, gaze back over your left shoulder. So how much space can you create in your right side? Maybe you bend one of your elbows or both of your elbows. Maybe you even walk one of your hands forward or come down to a forearm. So feel into it, breathe into it, last big breath. Tabletop position, hands and knees. And then from your tabletop, listen here. You're going to scoot your right hand back about a foot. Come down to your left forearm. So you're in a dolphin pose with your left arm. And your right arm is in a chaturanga position. So as best you can, see if you can get your shoulders nice and level. You want your elbows stacked over your wrists. Relax your neck. Let your head be heavy. Notice if it feels like your right shoulder is rolling forward, and if so, see if you can roll it back and down, squeeze your right shoulder blade towards your spine. From here, curl your toes under, lift your knees, and lift your hips. So it's like a one-arm dolphin pose. Your right arm is in chaturanga, left arm in dolphin. Nice, Anya. Press down through the belly of your left forearm. Keep your right arm strong and engaged. Soften your face. Awesome, Cam. Stay where you are at, my friends, or invitation to take your left leg to the sky. So reach your left leg high and use the strength in your leg to lift you out of your upper body, to lift you out of your arms. If your arms are shaking a little bit, that's okay. Send your breath there. See if you can be here for two more rounds. Strong core. Use your core to lift, lift, lift. Bottom of your next exhalation, left foot to the ground, knees to the ground, sit back and rest, child's or embryo pose. So it might feel really nice to reach your hands back towards your heels. You can grab hold of them if it's available. 
Or you can just let your palms face the sky. Breathe into your low back and reconnect to your ujjayi breath if you've lost it. Very nice, my friends. Next time you inhale, rise up to your hands and your knees, and then take it all the way back to a downward facing dog. Walk it out in your down dog. So strong hands on the ground, spread your fingers. Strong shoulders, plug your shoulders in. So a lot of people tend to hyperextend through their shoulders in this pose. So see if you can feel your shoulders plugged into their sockets. And then rather than pressing back through your shoulders, you're pressing back through your heart. Lift your hips really high. It's fine to bend your knees a lot. It's fine to be on your tiptoes. So we're going for length from fingertips up to our hips. Doesn't matter how straight your legs are. Take one more big inhale. You guys look so good. As you exhale, look to the top of your mat and however you want to get there, forward fold. Once you have arrived, come straight into a halfway lift. Breathe in and lengthen. Exhale, bow and fold. Do that one more time. Halfway lift. So really stick your butt out and press back through the tops of your thighs. See if you can feel your sit bones broaden. Exhale, fold. And this time, let's rise all the way up. So come through that halfway lift and keep rising arms over high. Hands to heart. Exhale. Inhale, high mountain. Exhale, push your right palm down and sway your hips left side body stretch. We did this last week. Inhale through center, reach up. Exhale, other side. So left palm pushes down like you're pushing stagnant energy towards the ground. Inhale, back to center. Let's go one more time each way. Exhale, right palm towards the ground, hips sway left. Inhale, high mountain. Other side, take your hips to the right, more weight in your right foot. Inhale, high mountain. Exhale, dive down slowly, forward fold. Halfway lift, breathe in. Exhale, plant your hands, feet to the back of your yoga mat, plank pose. So top of a push up, take just a moment, find your strength. So spread your fingers really wide. Push actively down into the ground. Draw your belly button in and up. See if you can take little baby rocks forward and back like you're sawing through a piece of wood with your body. See if you can feel the front of your thighs turn on. Your quad muscles are engaged. If you want to come down to your knees at any time, please feel free. Take one more inhale. Little rock forward onto your tippy tippy toes. Exhale, lower just one or two inches down. Bend your elbows a little bit. Don't let your shoulders roll forward. Inhale, straighten your arms and push back up. Exhale, a little bit lower. So rock forward, lower two or three inches. Strong arms, strong belly. Inhale, push back up. One more time like that. This time, halfway down. See if you can feel a 90 degree bend in your elbows. Strong through your shoulders. Inhale, push back up. Yes. Slowly all the way to your belly. Nice work. Nice lens. All right, let's take a Spider-Man Cobra. So hands nice and wide on the hardwood floor. Up on your fingertips. Lift your heart. Exhale, take a little twist to your right side, dip your left shoulder down. Through center as you breathe in, tone your belly to protect low back, lift, inhale. Exhale, other side, twist. Beautiful breath, inhale, center, lift your heart, tone your belly, press through pelvis and shoelaces. Exhale, release, rise to a tabletop position, hands and knees. So knees, hips width distance apart, Spread your fingers and actively push down. Feel your strong arms, your strong shoulders. Left arm forward, right leg back this time. So rather than a smiley face shape, feel a strong, straight, powerful line of energy from front to back. Your palm faces in, thumb faces up. Inner thighs hug towards one another. Press with your back foot like you're stomping it on an invisible wall. Nice, Diane. Take one more big inhale, friends. Slow motion, elbow to knee, round your spine, hollow out your belly, draw your belly button in and up. Inhale, re-extend, lengthen. Beautiful, like you're moving through molasses, elbow to knee, exhale. Smooth movement, yes. Inhale, lengthen, nice, Daniela. 
And last one, elbow to knee, all the way to empty. Feel your strong core. Inhale, reach. As you exhale, set your left hand down. Pivot on your left knee so left foot comes to the outside of your yoga mat and right arm to the sky. If you need to make any other adjustments to make that transition, please feel free. See if you can squeeze through your outer left butt cheek. Nice, Jen. And then press your hips forward. So let the front of your hips open. Awesome, Kathy. Maybe your right arm reaches forward towards me, towards the front wall. So feel that length in your right side. Stay right here. Or you can bend your right knee and reach back, grab hold. Once you've got your foot, gentle leverage. Work your own pose. So I know it's easier to kick your foot up. See if you can kick your foot straight back. Squeeze your outer left glute. Press your hips forward. Let your heart look up more. Last big, deep breath. Nice work. Awesome, Mikel. Slowly come back to hands and knees. Tabletop position. And then from your tabletop, gate your left leg out to the left. So sole of your foot presses down like a half wide-legged straddle. Right arm out to the right, all the way up, breathe in. Exhale, thread it through. So gently rest down outside of shoulder, outside of head, on the ground. But even though your head and shoulder are on the ground, there's not a lot of weight there. You feel your core lifting you up. You feel that connection, that invisible rope attached to your belly button, lifting towards the sky. Breathe into your back body a lot. Work it any way you want. About three more breaths, four more breaths. Nice job. If you are clenching your jaw or tightening through your forehead, see if you can soften. Left hand to the ground if it's not there already. On an inhalation, unthread your right arm, reach it out and up one more time. See if you can gaze up, open up, exhale, right hand down. Pick up your left foot, swing your left toes off the right edge of your mat. So push your toes down, then pull your hips to the left, gaze back over your right shoulder. So look for length in your left side. And you can get really creative. Sometimes I even like to use my right heel to kind of massage my left quad like it's a lacrosse ball on my left quad so it doesn't even have to be a technical yoga pose what can you find here take one more deep breath ah, and then back to tabletop hands and knees now that funky variation of dolphin so right forearm down and then scoot your left hand back about a foot so you want to make sure your wrist is under your elbow. It's not in front of your elbow, right underneath it. And a lot of times it works better for me if I bring my left hand slightly further out to the left. So right now I even have my hand kind of on the hardwood floor. Get your shoulders nice and even. So the tendency will be for left shoulder to be higher. See if you can feel them even out. And then plug your left shoulder into the socket so shoulder blade hugs your spine. When you're ready, curl your toes under, lift your hips. Yeah, nice work. So chaturanga in your left arm, dolphin pose in your right arm, push down through the belly of your forearm. Nice, Anya. Let your neck relax. And then use your breath to hold and support you. Awesome, Linz. Stay where you are at. Yep, or take your right leg to the sky. So imagine you're stepping on the ceiling with your right foot. Use your right leg to lift you out of your upper body. Use your strong core to hold and support you. Be here for just two more breaths. Soften your face. Unclench your jaw. Oh, nice, Jana. Awesome work, everybody. Right foot down, knees down. Take a moment, sit back. Child or embryo pose. So just let your shoulders relax. Let your arms relax. Big deep breaths into your low back. Maybe an open mouth sigh. Just kind of reset. Downward facing dog. Ah. 
All right, great, big, huge inhale, push into the ground, lift your hips even higher. Exhale, gaze to the top of your mat, step or float, forward fold. Once you have arrived, halfway lift position, breathe in, back of your neck long, sides of your neck long. Exhale, fold, nice, Katie. Press into your feet, take it all the way up. Big full body stretch as you inhale. Hands to heart, exhale. All right, inhale, arms to the sky. And this time, sit back into a chair pose. So bend your knees, weight in your heels as you sit back. So you should be able to look down and see your toes, no problem. If you can't see your toes, that means your knees are coming forward and the weight is not in your heels. So sit back and reach your butt back. See if you can pick up your toes and spread them. Bring your feet if they're not already. Hips width distance apart. Take one more inhale. And then as you exhale, we will twist. Left hand comes down in between your feet to a block or the ground, right arm to the sky. Great modification if you want to take it. Left forearm across your thighs, and then right arm reaches up. If you want to go for the half or the full bind, if that's in your practice and you feel ready for it, feel free. Be here for about two, maybe three more breaths. So weight in your heels, your knees are nice and even, your spine is long, nice cam. See if you can feel every single exhale, that ringing out, that twist from the inside. Good, Sue, take one last round wherever you are at. And then ever so slowly, let it go forward, fold. Ah. Good job, friends, lift halfway, breathe in. Exhale, plant your hands, feet back to plank position. Pause in your plank pose. Right arm is your base. Roll onto the baby toe edge of your right foot, Vashistasana side plank. If you want to modify, you could come down to right forearm or right knee. So please feel free to do what you need to do for your own body today. Lift your hips as high as you can if your bottom knee is not on the ground. So try to create an arch or a rainbow with your body. Maybe left arm forward and maybe even left leg floats up. Awesome, Mikkel. So feel that strength in your right side abdominals. One last huge breath. You guys are amazing. Nice, Diane. Slowly plank or modified. Inhale at the top. Push the ground away. Slowly lower all the way to your belly. Ha. Ah. Let's just take a sphinx pose. So bring your forearms to the ground, elbows under shoulders. With your forearms, imagine you're trying to pull your body forward. So drag your arms back. They won't actually move, but that's the intention. Most people in sphinx pose, they just let go through their belly. It kind of hurts through your low back a little bit after a while. So drag your belly button in and up and try to reach your tailbone down towards your heels. Press down through your forearms and pull back energetically like you want your heart to come through your shoulders. Tone your belly, navel to spine. Take one more inhale. Maybe feel this pose in a different way. Exhale, release. Downward facing dog, however you'd like to make your transition. So maybe through a chaturanga, maybe through tabletop child's pose. Ujjayi breath. Next time you breathe in, extend your right leg to the sky. Go ahead, peel your right hip open. So bend your knee, reach your knee out and up. So keep your shoulders strong, your hands rooted evenly and equally. Feel your outer right glute squeezing as you lift your right knee a tidbit higher. Take one more inhale. Stay here if you want. Exhale, right knee, left elbow. So across your body, like a little twist. Yes, inhale, back up, three-legged dog. You can open your hip if you want. So learn to articulate through your hip. Exhale, right to right. Aim for your armpit, aim high. Yes, inhale, back up, three-legged. Maybe open your hip one more time. And then everybody knee to your nose, round your spine, scoop out your belly, then step forward ever so softly. Rise up to a crescent lunge. Good, nice, awesome, Daniela. So all 10 toes face forward, hips square. Energetically, front hip pulls back, back hip pulls forward. So you're hugging towards midline, that's your stability. 
and then grow your upper body into your expression. Feel whatever there is to feel. Maybe you're spreading your fingers really wide, energy flowing out of them. Maybe you're softening today. So what do you want to embody? What do you want to invite in? Feel it. Breathe into it. One more in-breath. As you exhale, we will bring, let's see, our right hand to our right hip. And then stretch your left arm up and over. So try, try to create more length in your left side. Now we're going to use all this length in our left side to twist. So you will hinge at your hips. See if you can bring your left elbow to the outside of your right knee. And then maybe hands to prayer. Or I like to make a fist with my left hand. Press my right palm into my fist. If this feels like a bit too much today, left hand to the ground inside your right foot, right arm to the sky. So your personal variation. And then breathe. Lengthen through your spine. Strength through your legs. Breathe all the way down into low belly, low back. See if you can twist a little further. Last couple rounds of breath. You guys are awesome. Nice work. Awesome, Anya. Slowly, bottom of your next exhale, unwind. Bring your hands all the way over the left long edge of your mat. Parallel your feet, straighten out your legs. Take a spinal extension, breathe in, halfway lift. And then wherever you'd like to go, so you can fold, hang out, or explore. About five rounds. So what would feel good? What feels needed in your own body? Go there. Maybe you don't know, so you just get curious. You just feel around. What is there to notice? What is there to feel? What is there to respond to? Last couple of breaths and feel free anytime you guys to let that exhale out your mouth. Uh, all right, fingertips to the ground, halfway lift position. Bend your knees if needed. Walk your hands to the top of your mat. Rotate your toes forward so you're back in a low lunge position. From your low lunge, we're going to come into a warrior three with our fingertips on the ground or our hands on a block or block. So walk your hands forward, float your back leg up. So I don't want this to feel like you're in standing splits. I want it to feel more like a warrior three. So spine parallel to the ground, pull your right hip towards the back wall, feel your inner thighs hug in even more. Left hand will stay on the ground or a block. Put your right hand in the crease of your right hip, stick your fingers in that crease and literally Push your right hip back even more. Feel your inner thighs squeeze more. Feel your upper body start to twist to the right. Continue to work that twist with your core strength and maybe extend your right arm up. Open through the right side of your heart space. Yes. Maybe even gaze up at your right hand. Squeeze your inner thighs. Twist from your center. This is hard. I know. It's uncomfortable. I know. Be with it. One last breath. Awesome. Kathy, slowly release forward. Full. Nice work, my friends. So both feet at the top of your mat. You can give your right leg a little shake out. Bring your feet out to the width of your yoga mat. And then toes wider than your heels. Come down into a low yogi squat, malasana. So if at all possible, heels stay on the ground. Elbows to inner knees or inner thighs. Hands to heart center. And for me, I tend to roll onto the inner edges of my feet. So I really try to press into the outer edges as well. Notice where your personal imbalances are. If your heels are on the ground, see if you can pick up all of your toes and spread them, activate them. Send your breath down into your pelvis, down into your groin, your hips. Soften around whatever discomfort you feel. So discomfort is different than pain. If you can be with the discomfort for a couple breaths, it is okay. Not straining, not forcing, just softening around it. Bottom of your next exhale, fingertips to the ground, lift your hips to the sky. Walk your toes in however you like them. So hips width distance or big toes touch if that's what you prefer. Inhale, lift halfway, realign your spine. Exhale, bow and fold. 
Rise all the way up, big stretch, high mountain, inhale. Hands to heart, exhale. All right, inhale, arms to the sky. Exhale, chair pose, sit back. So weight in your heels. You should be able to look down, see your toes, no problem. So your butt is reaching back. Maybe even pick up your toes and spread them. Yes, good, awesome. Your poses look so nice. So fierce pose is the translation. Feel fierce in your body. Take one more inhale. Now as you exhale, we'll twist towards the windows this time. Right hand comes down in between your feet to a block or to the ground. Left arm to the sky. Also, there's that variation where you put your right forearm across your thighs. So feel free to modify. Feel free to make it your own. If you want to play with the half or the full bind, go for it. So both knees are nice and even, flush with one another. Both hips are reaching back. Heart is opening on your left side. If you can sit a little bit deeper, reach your butt back a little bit further. Last couple of breaths, maybe twist a little further with your exhales. So I don't have to see it, but you feel it. Nice, Jen. Very end of your next exhalation. Release, forward fold. Good, Diane. Ah, realign your spine. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands, feet to the back of your mat. You're in a plank position. Pause, side plank. Left hand is your base this time. So roll onto the baby toe edge of left foot. Good. If you want to modify, of course, you can bring left knee down or left forearm down. But Sue, lift your hips really high to get out of your wrist and your shoulder. So the more you can use those left side abdominals, the easier this pose will become, the lighter your body will feel. Maybe right arm towards me, towards the front wall. Maybe right leg floats up. So your personal fullest expression. Naijana, one more big, huge breath. Good, Anya. And then slowly plank or modified. Find your strength first. Inhale and push the ground away. Exhale, one strong straight line down to your belly. Spider-Man Cobra, like we did before. Fingertips on the ground. Lift your heart. Inhale. This time, bend your right knee. And then press into your right fingertips, roll up and over onto your left outer hip. See if you can let your left shoulder dip down as you reach your right tiptoes towards the ground behind you like you've got a scorpion tail for your right leg. Breathe down into your low back. Bottom of your next exhale, unwind. Switch to the other side. So right leg straight, left knee bends. And then roll up and over. This is kind of like a shoulder pigeon, just a different variation. So see if you can feel that stretch in the front of your right shoulder. Let your right shoulder work its way closer to the ground. If possible, you're still on your right fingertips. Reach your left toes behind you. If you want to make it more intense, even reach your left toes up towards your right hand behind you. One last deep breath. And release. Let it go. So back to center, lower down. However you want to find your way, downward facing dog. Ujjayi breath. Fire it back up. Ah. Inhale your left leg to the sky. Peel your left hip open. So it's just like your left hip is a hinge on a door. Your left leg is the door. Just swings open. So hands stay rooted. Shoulders stay strong. One more in breath. Nice, Linz. Exhale, left knee, right elbow, or as close as you can come. Push the ground away. Inhale, back up, three-legged. Open your hip if you want, left to left. So aim for your armpit, aim high. Yes, inhale, back up. Last one, knee to your nose. Scoop out your belly, round your spine. Lift through your waistline and step through softly. Low lunge, crescent lunge. Take your time to rise. The strong legs, square hips. energetically front hip draws back back hip draws forward nice sue good adjustments 
So feel the little engagement in your low belly like we did in Sphinx pose. You're drawing your belly button back towards your spine. Feel your low back lengthen. Take one more inhale here. As you exhale, bring your left hand to your left hip and see if you can create more space in your right side. So reach up and over, lengthen your right side body. We're going to use this length for our twist. So as you are ready, start to hinge forward, bring your right elbow to the outside of your left knee. Prayer hands or maybe a fist with your right hand and press your left palm into your fist. See if you can breathe into your back body in between your shoulder blades. Spine stays long. So if your gaze is back behind you, try not to gaze back behind you. Maybe even gaze forward so your spine follows that. You're elongating. Breathe down into your belly, low back. Strong through your legs. Last couple of breaths. Working your own twist. Really nice, you guys. Your personal fullest expression. Give it everything you've got all the way to emptiness. And then let it go, unwind. Bring your hands to the right long edge of your yoga mat. Parallel your feet, straighten out your legs. Inhale, lift halfway. And then anywhere you want to go. So you can actually um, work a fold or maybe you want to stand up and work from there. Maybe you want to take skandasana or a twist. It's all you, anything goes. Just notice, feel, observe, be in your body. So if you're needing something a little more restorative, now's a great time to just kind of relax, find your breath, reconnect. If you're wanting a challenge, maybe you're trying headstand or even handstand hops. All right. Next time you breathe in, spinal extension, fingertips on the ground or hands on the ground. So bend your knees as needed. Crawl your hands to the top of your yoga mat and rotate your toes to face forward again. So you're in a low lunge once again. And then remember, warrior three position. So walk your hands forward and float your back leg up like you're in a warrior three with your hands on blocks or fingertips on the ground. So not standing splits. Like a warrior three with a nice long spine, spine parallel to the earth. Now bring your left hand to the crease in your left hip. So put your fingers in that crease of your hip. Push your left hip towards the back of the room and see if you can feel your inner thighs squeeze more. See if you can feel your upper bo body start to twist towards the windows. Continue that twist using the strength in your core, maybe left arm to the sky. So hips are square. If your right hip is higher than your left hip, it's going to be really hard to twist. Awesome, Diane. Bend in your standing leg could be really helpful. See if you can stay rooted through the inner edge of your left foot. Open through the left side of your heart space. Give it one last round. Back leg strong, powerful. Twist, twist, twist. Amazing. Let it go forward. Fold. Nice job. Step down. And give your left leg a little shaky shake or both legs a little shaky shake. Walk your feet out nice and wide, width of your mat, toes wider than heels, low yogi squat malasana. So if possible, heels stay down, elbows to inner thighs or inner knees, hands to heart center. If you want more, you can take your arms to the sky with your palms pressing or your fingers interlaced. You could also play, play with a twist on both sides if you want to. So you do you, about two or three more breaths. Breathe all the way down into your hips. Feel all of that space inside of you, down in your pelvic bowl. So good, soften your face. Bottom of your next exhale, fingertips come down. Lift your hips back up and heel toe your feet in however you like them. So big toes touch or hips with distance, you choose. Halfway lift, breathe in, realign. Exhale, fold. Rise all the way up, big full body stretch as you inhale. Hands to heart, exhale. All right, inhale, high mountain. 
Pause here, my friends. Right foot is your foundation. Lift your left knee up, standing staff. So if you feel like this is where I wanna stay today, I'm just working on balance, you can stay here, work however you feel like working. Otherwise, invitation to bring your right hand to your left knee or outside of your left knee, and then reach your left arm behind you and twist, gaze over your left shoulder. You can stay here, or if you wanna go for, for a full hand to big toe pose or full revolved hand to big toe pose, Grab hold of your left foot. I personally like the outer edge. See if you can extend your left leg forward, press through your heel. Only extend as much as you can without rounding your back. Squeeze through your inner thighs. Stay connected to your center. Stay connected to your breath. Nice, Mikkel. Maybe gaze over your left shoulder. Last round. Amazing work. Slowly unwind. See if you can stay balanced on your right foot a little bit longer. Arms to the sky. Extend left leg if you want to. One more inhale. Slow motion, low lunge. So fingers and toes touch at the same time if possible. Once you've arrived in your low lunge, hands to the inside of your right foot. Walk your right foot out to the width of your mat. So maybe your right foot even comes onto the hardwood floor. Bring your back knee to the ground. Untuck your back toes. Let your hips sink down and lift your heart. So imagine you're trying to create a cobra pose with your heart. Hands on blocks might feel really good, or I just lift to my fingertips. Breathe down into the front of your left hip. If your right knee tends to collapse in, pivot your right toes a little bit out to the right. And if you roll onto the outer edge of your right foot, that's fine. Big deep breaths, about three more. Ah, nice work, you guys. All right, so here are your options. You can stay here a little bit longer, or you can work it in your own way. Maybe you want to lift your back knee and lower your heart, or option where cat grabs its tail. So if you want to come with me, left hand stays on the ground, right arm reaches up and back. Bend your left knee, see if you can grab hold of your foot. Once you've got it, kind of scoot your left hand forward and see if you can let your heart look up towards the sky, kick foot into hand, pull hand back into foot. Let your right knee open out to the right so you're on the outer edge, the pinky toe edge of your right foot. Right ankle is strong. Yeah, right shoulder is open. Roll it back and down. Wherever you are at, personally, one more big, huge breath. Feel everything there is to feel. Amazing work. Come back, low lunge. So walk your right foot back to midline, frame it. And then from a low lunge, lift your back knee up, take your back or take your right leg to the sky. So three-legged down dog, right leg lifts. Open your right hip, bend your right knee. Stay here or option to flip. Right foot comes down, right arm forward. Yeah, lift your heart, lift your hips. Breathe down into your belly. Your personal fullest expression, last big deep breath. And regular down dog. Nice lens, walk it out, pedal it out. Ah, open mouth, sigh if you like. Great big huge inhale, push the ground away. Exhale, look to the top of your space and however you'd like to get there, forward fold. Inhale to a halfway lift. Exhale, let it go. Take it all the way up. Big full body stretch as you rise and reach. Inhale. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, high mountain. Left foot, this time, is your base. Right knee lift, standing stop. So this can be your pose. Stay here, explore here. Otherwise, we're twisting left hand outside of your right knee. Right arm swings back. This can be where you stay. Hug in with your inner thighs, broaden through your collarbones. If you'd like, option to take full revolved hand to big toe pose. So grab hold of your right foot, outer edge, or maybe piece fingers around big toe. Extend your right leg only as much as you can without rounding your back. So if you still got your knee bent, that's fine. Press through your heel, flex your toes, squeeze your inner thighs. Maybe even try gazing back over your right shoulder. Yes, awesome. Nice, Jana. One last breath. 
if at all possible, stay balanced on left foot, unwind. Standing staff, arms reach up, perhaps extend right leg, inhale. Slow motion, low lunge, soft landing, maybe fingers and toes come down at the same time. Good. Once you're in your low lunge, hands inside left foot. Walk your left foot out really wide. So all the way out to the width of your mat, maybe even onto the hardwood floor. Back knee down, untuck your back toes. And again, like you're trying to do cobra or up dog with your chest. So hands can be on blocks or I'm just lifting to my fingertips. So what I want you to try not to do is round and look down at the ground. I know it's easier, but see if you can let your hips sink, melt, lift your heart up. Don't let your left knee fall in. So if anything, spin your left toes out to the left, roll onto the outer edge of your left foot. Take about three or four more big, spacious breaths down into the front of your right hip. Good job, my friends. All right, so you can stay here if you prefer, or you can do your own thing, lift your hips, melt your heart. Otherwise, working into your cat grabs its tail pose. So left arm up and then back. Bend your right knee. Locate your right foot. I like to grab personally the pinky toe edge of my foot. Once you've got it, kick foot in the hand, pull hand back into foot. I have to always kind of walk my right hand forward a bit. See if you can let your left shoulder open up. So it's not rolling forward, it's rolling back. Let your heart look up. Pivot your left toes out, roll onto the outer edge of your left foot. Your ankle is really, really strong. Good job, last huge breath. Nice, Daniela. Nice, Katie. And then slowly release. Good, Diane. Come back to a regular low lunge position. So walk your left foot back to midline. Frame it. Lift your back knee off the ground. And then three-legged down dog, left leg to the sky. Unthread your left leg. Take it all the way back and up. Open your hip. Bend your left knee. Peel it open. Stay here or option to flip your dog. Find your three-legged back bend. The left foot down. Open through your front body. Nice, Kathy. Breathe all the way down and stretch your abdominal wall. Yes, one last round, wherever you're at. And come back, downward facing dog. Walk it out. And just again, a reset. Let's flow for a moment. One more inhale, push the ground away. Exhale, look to the top of your mat, step or hop, forward fold. Halfway lift, inhale. Let it go, empty out, exhale, fold. Ha. Rise up, arms overhead as you breathe in. Hands to heart, exhale. All right, breath to movement, inhale, high mountain. Take a little side body stretch. Exhale, right palm pushes down, hips sway left. Inhale, center, reach up. Other side, left palm pushes down, hips sway right. Inhale, center, let's add a little baby back bend. Exhale, navel to spine, protects low back, curl open. Re-extend, realign, inhale. Stick your butt out, reach your heart forward. Maybe big bend in your knees as you take your dive down and fold. Halfway lift, inhale. Plant your hands, feet back, however you want to find your way to down dog. So vinyasa your way. See you back in downward facing dog. All right, inhale your right leg to the sky. Right shin to the top of your mat, pigeon pose. Body comes down gently. If you would rather take this in a seat or on your back, please feel free. So try to find structure, integrity first. So rather than plopping your right hip down, which I know is easier if you have that mobility, you want to lift your right hip up. Pull it back. So like there's a rope attached to your right butt cheek, pulling up and back as you take your heart forward and down. So it might feel like you're coming out of the pose a little bit. What you're actually doing, you're plugging, good Katie, you're plugging your right femur bone into the hip socket. So instead of just 
exploiting your hypermobility in your joints. You're actually stretching the muscles and creating stability in your joints. Take big, deep breath. I know sometimes yoga seems like a great time to think about everything you've got to do, figure out how to organize the rest of your life, but see if instead you can allow yourself to just be in your body, just be with your breath, just be with sensation. So let yourself have this time to just stop thinking a little bit. To turn off your mind a little bit. It won't turn off, but rather than getting involved in all those thoughts, wandering off with them, over and over again, you're just coming back. The simplicity of the inhale and exhale, the rise and fall, the expansion and contraction. It's your anchor to this moment. Take two or three more breaths in pigeon. Ah. Next, exhale all the way to emptiness. And then slowly start to lift back up or however you need to make a transition into a seated position. So we'll meet in a seated position. If you're in regular pigeon, you can just kind of plop over onto your right butt cheek, swing your left leg around. Once you're sitting, take both legs out in front of you for a moment, give them a little shake out. And then take the sole of your right foot to your left inner thigh and open your hips up. So we're not squaring our hips forward. So if our hips are squared forward, if we were to extend our right leg, we'd be in a forward fold, regular forward fold. If our hips are open, we extend our right leg, we're in a wide-legged straddle. So kind of feel, are my hips open or are my hips square? Let them open. Flex your left toes back, press down into your left heel. Press your foot into your leg, leg into your foot, and see if you can find a little more length in your spine. Sit up taller. Take your right arm up, breathe in. And then as you exhale, side body stretch. So maybe you slide your left hand down your left leg as your right fingertips reach for the front wall. I like to bring my left forearm inside my left leg. So if that's available to you, you might do the same. And you can use your left forearm inside your left leg, to kind of push arm into leg, leg into arm, and see if you can open your heart more towards the sky. So we're not going for a forward fold. We're going for a side body stretch, lengthen through your right side. Yeah, I think up and over. Breathe into your right waistline, left ri or right rib cage, space between your ribs. Keep pressing foot into leg, leg into foot. Keep flexing your left toes back and pressing your left heel down. One last big, huge, full body breath. All right, inhale, lift your torso and reach both arms up. Inhale here as you exhale, set your right hand down behind you. If you want, you can just reach your left arm back, lift your heart up, that's your pose, or push into your hand, lift your hips up, lengthen. If you want, you can turn it into more of a wild thing, let your heart look up. Otherwise, it's more of a modified side plank. Just go for length and space wherever you're at. Last huge, big, deep breath. And then let it go. Come back down. However you want to transition to your downward facing dog. So if you want to, you can boat pose it out for a few breaths. You're feeling crazy. Maybe you boat pose it out with high, low, high. <laughs> And then whenever you're ready, if you want to, you can play with a jump back or just step back. Move through a vinyasa if you're feeling it. Eventually down dog and just walk it out.
So feel right side versus left side, right leg versus left leg. Not necessarily judging, criticizing, but just noticing. Is there a difference? Maybe, maybe not. Inhale, left leg to the sky. Pigeon pose, left shin to the top of your mat. Gently set your body down. So left knee nice and wide rather than just plopping down, which I know is easier. Whenever I hear people call it sleeping pigeon, I'm like, you should not feel like sleeping pigeon. You should not be able to fall asleep. So there should be structure, strength, stability, integrity in your legs. So that integrity comes by hugging in, plugging the joints into their sockets. So left hip is pulling up and back as your heart bows forward. And I think it's so interesting, integrity in your body. Can't really tell. I can't tell if you are engaging. I can't tell if you're creating that strong structure beneath the pose. Just like in life. Not everybody can always tell if you are living with integrity. But you know, you feel it. So it's a hard part. But it's what makes everything safe and sustainable. So yoga, you can move through it, just plopping into the poses, just mindlessly transitioning from pose to pose, going through the motions. Or you can move through it with intention, with awareness, feeling everything there is to feel in each pose. Getting curious about your own body today in this moment in each pose. Slowing down enough to actually tune in to your own space and connect with your own body. So just because somebody practices yoga for 10 years, it doesn't mean they have any connection to their body. You can't tell from the outside what's going on inside. But that's all yours. That's your practice. That's your yoga. What is happening moment to moment, breath to breath. Where is your awareness? Where is your intention? Take about three more here. Good job, my friends. Let's slowly start to find our way into a seat again. So however you want to get there. Eventually, both of your legs forward. Give them that little shaky shake. And then take the sole of your left foot to your right inner thigh. And let your hips open up. So if you were to extend your left leg, you'd be in a wide-legged straddle, not in a forward fold or an extended, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> left foot presses into your right thigh, right toes flex back, press your right heel into the ground. So you do want to feel a little bend in the back of your right knee rather than hyperextending. Arms to the sky, or if you want, just left arm to the sky, your choice. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, up and over, side body stretching your left side. So maybe your right hand slides down your right leg or right forearm to the inside of your right leg. You can use that to open your heart more. Press foot into leg, leg into foot. Use your big, deep breaths. So this pose, you can really just kind of hang out, do nothing, nothing much is happening. Or you can work it breath by breath. You can work it with your awareness, with those little tiny micro adjustments. So I can't see those micro adjustments on the outside, but you can feel them in your own body. Take one last round. See if there's any more space you can find. Next inhalation, lift your torso, reach both arms up. Exhale, left hand comes down behind you. Maybe this is right where you stay. Just reach your arm back, lift your heart towards the sky, or push down, lift your hips up. Lengthen your right side or turn it into more of a modified wild thing. Let your heart open. So wherever you choose to go with it, you're just feeling into all that space you've created. One last huge breath. Ah, and then come back down, sit bones to the ground. Before we go on to our back, Let's take one forward fold and you have 
options. So options are forward fold with your feet together, knees apart, forward fold with your legs out wide, or forward fold with your legs extended. So you choose all of those variations. Every time you're doing a forward fold, you want to try to get onto the front edge of your sit bones first, rather than feeling like you're going to roll backwards. So whatever you need to do, if that means bending your knees more, get onto the front edge of your sit bones. And in your own time, just start your dive down. So you're diving down, not rounding down. Heart reaches forward when you can't lengthen any more, then you release into your fold. Yeah, nice, Sue. So feel like you're trying to reach your butt back and your heart forward. Nice job, good awareness. And if you have your legs extended, your toes are pointing straight up, not out, not in. Backs of your heels pressed down. Breathe down into your low back and use every breath to just allow your body to soften around the pose. Take about three more rounds using each breath to make something happen. I don't have to see it. You feel it. Really good, you guys. Very, very, very end of your next exhale. Take it all the way to empty and roll super slowly up. That is the very last thing to lift. Once your head stacks, you can use your arms to guide yourself down onto your back. Or if you want, you can use your core. So legs extend forward and slowly roll down, hollow out your belly, one vertebra at a time, lower yourself down. There's gonna be one spot that's really, really hard. Once you're on your back, my friends, everybody, full body stretch, arms overhead, legs extend forward. Take a moment, and as you lengthen, actively reach, feel your back ribs lift a lot. See if you can press your back ribs down a little bit, so more neutral spine as you lengthen. One more inhale. Exhale, hug your knees in, rock it out gently side to side. Give your low back a little massage. Supine spinal twist of your choice. You can go either direction first. Take about five rounds on this side, then switch to the other side. So if you haven't already in your next couple of breaths, switch to the other side. And then when you feel pretty much even on both sides, back to center, happy baby pose. Just kind of rock it out, maybe even extend one leg, both legs. Play in your happy baby, embody a happy baby in their crib. And then if there are any other poses, any other stretches, any other finishing movements that your body would like, give yourself a few rounds of breath to move through those. 
So anything else your body is calling for. And if that's going straight into your Shavasana, that's perfect as well. My reading for you is just an excerpt from a poem by John O'Donohue. The poem is called On Light. When we look into the heart, may our eyes have the kindness and reverence of candlelight. That the searching of our minds be equal to the oblique crevices and corners where the mystery continues to dwell, glimmering in fugitive light. When we are confined inside the dark house of suffering, that moonlight might find a window. When we look into the heart, may our eyes have the kindness and reverence of candlelight. The searching of our minds be equal to the oblique crevices and corners where the mystery continues to dwell, glimmering in fugitive light. When we are confined inside the dark house of suffering, that moonlight might find a window. That reminds me of the song by Leonard Cohen where he says, there's a crack in everything. And that's how the light gets in. So our cracks, our pains, our sufferings, are just how we let in the light, how we connect to those deeper places inside of us. So these last few moments, imagine your body in some way in your imagination and imagine there's cracks everywhere in your physical body and your skin. Cracks maybe in your fingers, your hands, maybe in your heart. And that's how the light gets in. That's how the love gets in. So as I play these instruments, these sounds, these vibrations for these last few moments, just let those sounds, those frequencies, Move through those cracks. Whatever's there. See if you can let the sound just kind of work with it inside of you. Feel whatever there is to feel. Take big, deep breaths anytime you need. Shavasana. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. 
Get deep breath in. Let it go. Ah. Just slowly bring movement back into your body. Wiggle fingers, toes. When you're ready, roll to either side. Fetal position for a moment. As you rest in your fetal position on your side, just let your practice all the energy from it, all the energy from that sound bath, kind of absorb in, visualize it in some way, imagine it in some way. See it integrate into your being. Use your arms to guide yourself up in the seat of meditation. So right back where we began. And as you come into your seat, notice, do you feel any different than you did 75 minutes ago? physically, energetically, emotionally. No judgment, just observation, curiosity. Gather your hands to your heart and bow your head to your heart in acknowledgement and gratitude. Just thank yourself for making the effort, taking the time to be here, to roll out your mat, do your practice, and connect with yourself in a more intentional and deeper way. 
Thank you for letting me guide you. Namaste. Thank you, friends. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful rest of your Thursday. Did you just sneeze or something? <laughs> yeah, I sneeze his roots. Are you a sneezy girl? Oh, are you a sneezy girl today? Miss Lady Boy. Who's good girl? You're so welcome. Thanks for coming. Yeah, we'll see you guys. <laughs> yeah, you guys don't have to go on coffee dates anymore. Just come to yoga. Yoga.